Hello, uh, this is for uh, Fuck X Factor magazine. This is Henry Clooney sat here with me now. Uh, stiff little fingers. And uh, we're just going to have a quick chat and find out more about the guy. Oh dear. Oh dear. So if you can uh, just give us a quick uh, recall on how you originally got into music. Originally? Right? Yeah. I met, funny enough, met Jake Burns at school the first day of uh, the term of 1970. Yeah. And uh, he had a guitar and I'd never thought about playing guitar but <clears throat> went to his house at lunchtime and you know blah 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 yeah. as you do listen to records and I thought I want to get one of those um this would have been September and uh, I got a guitar for Christmas um, and the funny thing is my dad said to me I'll only get you this if you learn how to play it <laughs> now it's 2011 and I'm still trying you know but um it's uh that was it and I always loved music but never in my life thought of playing it um, and then Jake and me, as we became friends, we used school. Yes, we were schooled together, together. And we uh, then would sit down in his house and play and blah, blah, blah. Um, learn the most ridiculous songs. You're talking about Neil Diamond songs. Okay, yeah. But they're easy to play, you know, you don't. But this will be sort of 76, 77. 74. 74. Long time ago. Christmas 74. And then. Um, we were in various school bands that were just for fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think we ever played. No, we never played a game. We used to just make names up. There was the, the BC band, which was Burns Clooney, like, and that was, you know, a oh, great name. Yeah. Um, and that was it. I mean, after that, we went on to form Highway Star. Now, Highway Star was... Brian Falloon, who was the first drummer yeah, on the yeah. Brian, Brian and Jake were in the same class. And then what happened in that year was his class and my class got like amalgamated into one. Okay. So that's when I met them. And Brian was the drummer um, on the former Highway <laughs> Star, which was a really bad, well, it was a rock band. Obviously, with a name like Highway Star, I mean, we did. Free bird, <laughs> excellent chance. <yeah. laughs> it's easy tap stuff, and I mean, it was fun. Yeah. Um, and we actually did for Belfast. We did okay. We did quite a few gigs. Um, it was that would have been seventy six. Um, and, I mean, we were doing like say Rory Gallagher and stuff like that. And I remember then hearing. Um, New rules by the damned and stuff like that. Yeah. And I remember thinking, this is just so much better yeah, than this is good play. Yeah. And, and it, it, it really hit me like that. And I know that's not cliche, I heard punk a lot, but that's what happened. Mm -hmm. We were doing a gig in uh, a place in the centre of Belfast. It doesn't really matter, a place called Mooney's. And um, we had a ramp sitting up and I was playing this stuff and I was thinking, I really hate this. So I sat in the amp and played the set sitting down, you know, I was like, oh, and I'm trying to get Jake to put in some of this stuff, um, Eddie and Hot Rods, uh, yeah. The Damned, I mean there wasn't a lot around, but Eddie and Hot Rods live at the marquee and stuff, and uh, of course, Jake was like, I'm not playing that, no, 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 so sort they of threw me out of the band, that should have been a warning, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> so what happened was, was um, I kept saying that this, this, you have to listen to this because this music's really good. Mm -hmm. um, and Jake wouldn't listen to it. And by this stage, you're talking probably six months later, so I think the first Down album was the first Clash one was definitely out. Um, so I would be bringing him the, the Clash album and saying, listen, listen to this, keep listening to it. And all he ever said was, it's the biggest load of whatever I've ever heard. Um, and that was hard because. I wanted to play it, and he didn't. He wanted to stick with, with the older stuff. Um, and I managed to keep bringing it up. I used to go to Jake's house all the time and listen to music, so I would be bringing this stuff up. Listen to this, listen to this. So I kind of left it with him for a couple of days, and he, he eventually, eventually gave it a listen and didn't you know, approach it with, uh, I already, already don't like this. Um, and what is it? It really was with the side of them that this, this is what I want to play and I managed to get him into the, the same frame of mind. Yeah. yeah. So that was basically the, the whole first part, right. if that makes sense. And that's when you decided that he's going to be, I mean, I've, I've 
watch and listen to some of the things that Jake said and stuff. And, and the, in the beginning, I always thought that Jake was very reluctant to actually call it a punk band. He was. It was more of a... See, but in, in a way, I, not in a way, I can understand that because one thing we never did was go down the, the Mohican route. Right, yeah. Because at the end of the day, it, it, it wasn't as, as planned as this sounds, but that's going to put you at a certain period that's really going to date you. Yeah. Because once that goes out, you look like you're from that time. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't our thing. I mean, it's spiky hair and all that, but not multicolored Mohicans and things. And while I always thought it was at the beginning, it was more a punk band than anything, it was also a rock well, band. Well, a lot of things was labeled as punk around this time. The Elvis Costello. Elvis Costello, <laughs> the jam, the exactly. police. You know. So, I mean, it was one of those things where would people say you're a punk band? We'd say, you know, if you want. Yeah. You know, um, it's almost like, do you want to call yourself that, or do you just want to let people make their own mind up? I mean, our first tour was supporting the Tom Robinson band. Yeah. They weren't a punk band. They were a classic, ordinary rock band. That's right, yeah. I mean, yeah. you listen to them now, and it's, it, there's that's no way you could say that's yeah. punk. Yeah. But at the time. Oh, yeah, the, 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 the audience was punk. punk. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, while he might have been reluctant to say it, there, there was good reason. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was that was the beginning of the whole thing. And when you come over to England mm -hmm. first time, mm -hmm. was it um, Eric's and places like that? that, that was first. Uh, well, I mean, the first gig we ever did was in um, a place in London called the Electric Ballroom. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it's the first time I'd ever played outside. Well, well, come on, and we're all like, you know, cause only one guitar. We didn't have any money for any mm -hmm. more. Kind of the first song, and I broke two strings in the first chord. And it's like, so I had to say, we're going to have to take a break, and we'll write back and play anything yet. Yeah. Um, but it was great, and the crowd. And it was a big crowd. Oh, it was. It was yeah. The crowd loved it. Yeah. Um, and then with the next gig we did was at the Lyceum, but it was it was with, I think it was like six bands on the Human League who were with us. Right. But that was when they were more experimental right. before the girls yeah. and things yeah. um but um one of the bands on uh which band was it i can't remember but the guy <laughs> the drummer's playing and we're so we're just watching blah, 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 blah. and the drummer gets up runs around and pushes the, the guitar player off the stage now the stage is about eight feet high okay and there's all like um scaffolding guy falls there's just like silence and he goes up to a mic and says, is there a doctor in the audience? He broke, <laughs> broke the guy's neck. Oh. <laughs> and we're thinking, yeah. is this what it's like This is here? perfect. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Do, are we supposed to do this? <laughs> you know, each other. Yeah, sure. But um, no, it, it was great and the people really enjoyed it. And because we'd had a John Peel session going, yeah. a lot of them knew the music and had bought the first two singles and things. So it was we couldn't ask for it anymore, no, because to be honest, John yeah. played it for over a week every time. time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Which is unheard of. It really yeah. was, and we used to sit, the first single we did, of course, we used to stick the sleeves together with our, by hand, you know, yeah. put the records in, and while we were doing that, it's on the radio, so it was, um, yeah. it was really good. Uh -huh. And he really made it, of course. And you did, um, I remember uh, running on from the pub on night, um, you've done a BBC play, play for today, and that was bad. Was that filmed at Eric's? That it was filmed at Eric's. Yeah. It was supposed to be a club in Belfast. Yeah, that's but what, what else was funny about it was, of course, you don't play, pretend you're in yeah. away, and they got all these um, punk audience to come in and watch us, mm -hmm. and you know they're talking about. It. But of course, they kept shouting out for us to play songs, and we we're trying to explain them. That's, the amps aren't real. <laughs> yeah, you know? it's not the real. It's <laughs> they're shouting white noise, and we're like, we can't play anything. <laughs> but yeah, play for today. Um, that was Jake's one and only acting appearance, and he he hated it. Really, like, that's wooden. <laughs> he, he'd say that. Back, back in the day, it was very good. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I watched it probably about three months ago, and that was like, no, no. <laughs> Definitely different. It's not good. <laughs> so simple things moved on pretty rapidly. Uh, the, Went the really quick. Album. Uh, into the charts, unknown for an independent album to get in the charts. We were on tour with two other bands from Rock Trade, uh, Essential Logic, and 
the normal. It was the normal. Yeah, 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 was yeah the normal, yeah. Well, and what the idea was that every night we would uh, rotate who the headliner was. Yeah. yeah. But after about three gigs, it became obvious that, I mean, we if we were on first, we'd play and everybody would go home. Mm -hmm. So it was like, look, this is silly. Yeah. I mean, we're not saying, we we're talking to them, saying, look, we're not saying we're blah, 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 but obviously they're here to see us. Mm -hmm. So they even said, look, well, we're playing to nobody. So we ended up yeah. headlining yeah. every night, which just made sense. Mm -hmm. But it, it, halfway through the tour, we were sitting outside of the club in Derby, and that was when the album chart came out, and was in number 14, which yeah. was like... Incredible. Oh, absolutely incredible. Yeah. And the gigs were, I mean, it was so... The gates were stuffed to the doors. I mean, it was like yeah. the people lying on people, you know, it was so, yeah. it was great, but it, it became big right in the middle of a small tour, if you know what I mean. That's right, yeah. Yeah, you saw the first big tour, would have been nobody's there. Nobody's there, yeah. would, would have been the big one, yeah. and that, um, yeah, that, that was was really good. I really loved that tour. It was, that would have been early 1980, I want to say. That's right, yeah. I mean, I can remember, uh, some of the hardcore punks sort of took a dislike to Stiff Little Fingers then because he was walking down the high streets and for the first time you'd had Stiff Little Fingers albums in the front of W.H. Smith's yeah. albums, which... Uh, it takes away the underground thing of it, but it's hard to say. I mean, I can understand why people do that, but you also have to say whose fault is it in that, okay, people could say, oh, you sold out, you sold out that. But if people want to buy the albums, yeah. what do we do to support it? It's, it's, it's a very English attitude. Love the underdog. This of is course. success, we don't like you no more. No. Yeah. Enemy, we're all serious for yeah. building up, not going down. Exactly, yeah. And I, I think that the, uh, the Nobody's Heroes album was a really good follow up to Inflammable Material. It was. A lot of people I know didn't like it because it was cleaner. And, yeah. And it moved on a bit. I actually can see that because I, I think. The, the difference is pr pretty big, but still got the same ideas. Yeah. But, um, yeah.